Hello everybody. Uh, today our topic is also regarding LT radio network planning and today uh, we will look into how to model, how to calculate uh, the value of uplink noise rise <coughs> when we are planning an LT network. Uplink noise, uh, uplink, uh, uplink noise rise is a very important factor when it comes to your link budget and your radio, radio network planning and it is an input value in all uh, planning softwares. If you open any transmitter or cell properties in at all planet or any other tool, you will have to put in a figure of noise rise. Usually, uh, if you are working uh, at a lower level, you're not in terms of uh, uh, deploying or designing the network for the first time, uh, you will not notice how to enter this value, how to estimate or how to calculate this value. And today, we will give you um, a very uh, effective overview of how this value is calculated and how this value is used and what this value represents. So let's start our today's uh, video and just to remind you again, please do subscribe to our channel and also uh, press the bell icon. Thank you. So what is actually noise rise? Noise rise basically uh, represents your intercell interference uh, when it comes to your link budget. And when we are talking about uplink noise rise, uh, then we have this figure called DIUL, uh, which is included as a margin figure in your link budget. So for example, when you are calculating your link budget for the maximum attenuation possible, that is your LP max, then the, it will include your cell range, plus your margin for noise rise and plus other margins. So what happens is that your attenuation is increased when you include this noise rise figure because if there is more intercell interference, then you need to reduce the rise cell radius in order to compensate for the interference coming from other cells. So let's see how this noise rise is calculated. As we described in the previous video for a designing LT network and I have given the link uh, in the description of this video, we have to set some constant values for example P0. P0 is your uplink power control target and the equation for uplink power control target P0 is given by P0 is equal to your nominal P with CH minus 10 log N. So what happens is that if your this parameter which is the nominal PU uh, physical uplink shared channel value is for example neg 100 O3 and if on the receive side you have more than one antennas for example you have two antennas you have four antennas then you can push this target further so it will it can be pushed to neg 106 based on this uh, value so you can put your receive antenna value here and then if your p nominal uh, whatever value that is if it is neg 103 then your p naught will be calculated via this formula so what is this curve showing? This curve in this direction, it is your cell range. In this direction, it is IRB and IRB is the noise intercell interference factor which you have to incorporate in this formula. Then this NRB is your thermal noise and thermal noise can be calculated with another formula but we are not discussing it here. And this QPUSCH is your cell load. This represents the resources, the amount of resources or the amount of resource blocks that are being used for uplink shared channel. So as we are calculating this per RB, so we will have to put a load value. For example, if you are using 80%, then you have your 0.8 value. If you are using 80% of your resource blocks for 
your physical uplink shared channel, then we have 80% here. If you're using 100%, then we have 100% here. Then you have this IRB. Now, IRB is usually calculated with by simulations, but in order to give you an idea how IRB is simulated, this is your uh, increasing uh, LSA. So this is your increasing path loss, and this is your increasing value for IRB. So these are different curves, and these are P01, P02, P03. These are for different power control, uplink power control targets. So for example, your power control target is NEG108. So this means you have a lower power uh, uplink power control target. So all of the cells basically in your network will have to transmit lower powers to achieve this target. And so therefore you will have lower intercell interference and therefore your curve stops at this lower value. Now if you increase the power control uh, target, your IRB, that is your representing your interference, intercell interference, it will go up. And as you increase the power control target further, your IRB will increase further and therefore your the margin for your intercell interference or your noise rise or in other in other case will also increase. Now here you will have a question that why should we increase the power control target? So the answer for that is that when you increase the power control target, it means that your mobile will have a better SINR and it will have a better throughput. And that is the bottom line of any design that you have to basically draw an optimal point that you have good throughput and you have good coverage. So, and you use the optimal amount of resources. So this IRB value comes from this graph as explained. Then you have your cell load and then you have your thermal noise. So, and from this we can calculate, uh, we can estimate the value of the margin or the uh, value that you need to put in the link budget to represent the intercell interference in LTE. Now another important aspect in terms of uh, noise rise is uh, how you are combining uh, your received signals. So uh, usually if you are using MRC, that is your maximum ratio combining, that you are basically combining uh, all the signals received without any interference rejection, then you have this formula. And if you are using uh, basically uh, IRC, that is interference rejection, then you add a factor like this, then log 1 plus QQH and 1 minus beta IRB and NRC. Now this beta, this beta represents how you are using interference rejection techniques. If you have very few interferers and you are using IRC, your value will be hovering around 0.9 2.7 and as you see if you put this 0.9 or 0.7 here your value will significantly reduce and the amount of noise rise margin that you need to include in your link budget will also reduce and therefore you can have a better cell radius. If you are using IRC but you have a lot of interferers then your value will be around 0.3 or 0.1 but still it will be better than your formula for maximum ratio combined. So noise rise, value and margins also depend on the type of combining you are use, using in your receiver side that is your node B side. Once you have the noise rise values, you put them in the link budget and then you can have your maximum cell radius, your site to site distance and how many sites you need to uh, have to provide the amount of coverage that you are intending to provide. I think. Uh, the concept of noise rise or intercell interference in uplink in LT uh, would be clearer to you after this video and uh, we will meet you next time in our next video but please do uh, leave your feedback in your comments if you like the video please like the video and please do subscribe to our channel thank you so much for your time and hope to see you next time thank you